Welcome back to my house build journey. This video is going to be about CLT framing and insulation. CLT framing was originally scheduled for week 50 of last year, but it was postponed to week 1 and then finally assembled on week 3 of this year. Before the CLT assembly could be carried out, a bunch of preparations had to be done. First was to get the scaffolding up. We had to pour some extra gravel on three sides of the foundation to make the scaffolding a bit stable and which was also an extra expense that I had not accounted for. The next thing is the electricity connection. The electricity connection type that I chose is the ground meter connection. Most people go for a temporary connection when building the house and then go for a facade meter. Uh, January is a month with very low daylight. Uh, the CLT contractor asked me if I could set up a floodlight because they're gonna be working long working hours. And I bought this floodlight from one of the local shops here and set it up. I must say it was pretty useful, but unfortunately after a few days of the assembly, it got stolen. So it was the day. I was all excited, got up early, went to catch my usual train. And to my luck, two back-to-back -back trains were cancelled. And then I had to take a taxi. The one-way taxi fare from Malmo to Skirup is the same cost as the monthly train pass. The CLT contractors were waiting at the site. They had already began unloading the CLT elements. They needed electricity and I had the key to my ground meter. As soon as I reached, I opened that box and connected their big cables. And now all the tools could start getting charged for the long day ahead. After all the CLT elements were unloaded onto the site, it was time to begin with the ground floor wall assembly. Here we see the first outer wall being assembled. The element is skillfully maneuvered using the crane to place it at the correct position according to the production drawings. And then alignment tools are temporarily fastened and using spirit levels, finer adjustments are done. It is quite tricky to get the correct angles initially. So this procedure is repeated on all the outer walls. Here we see one of the walls on the southern side being assembled. The south side has large windows. By the end of the day one, all the outer walls were assembled. Day 2 started off with finishing off one of the top elements on the east side of the outer wall and then all the inner walls were started. On day 2, the roof of the ground floor was also completed. Day 3 started off with the first floor walls. So here we see one of the support beams being assembled. Some pretty long screws, I think the max was about 44 centimeters, were used here. And here we see the ridge beam being assembled. The ridge beam runs about 18 meters and is made up of two parts. So you can see the amount of screws that are getting connected there. And once the ridge beam was completed, it was time to mount the roof elements. The roofs came in on day 3 on a socket truck. They were preloaded on the truck in the reverse order of assembly. They were directly lifted off from the truck and mounted one by one. By the end of day 3, the CLT assembly was complete.
So day four started off with mounting of the insulation support beams. The insulation support beams were also mounted by the sealed contractors. On day four, I also had another local contractor start with the weatherproofing work. In this procedure, a layer of rose pond as the roof boards, a layer of Styco rigid insulation board, and Proclima Solitex 3000 Connect weatherproofing membrane were mounted. This pattern is repeated throughout the building envelope and finished off with pattern work. So this piece of work took more time than I had anticipated but it was eventually completed laying up the foundation for the insulation contractor to come in and start his work. When mounting the roof underlay boards, the last two rows on the top were temporarily fastened. This was opened up again to blow in the wood fiber insulation. For the walls, about 110 mm diameter holes were drilled and then wood insulation was blown in. This was patched later with Tescon Vanate. The insulation was completed in two days. There were some not so good things that were discovered as well. I'll leave the blog link if you're interested to read about that. The next stop is the roof installation. Stay tuned for next video update for details. That's it for now. Take care and bye.